Hoş geldiniz. Ee, bu oturumda İran yazar Marcani Baktari ile birlikte e, içinde yaşadığı toplumun e, ve rejimin kadınların yazısına olan etkilerini konuşacağız. E, Marcani Baktari bir 80 yılında Tahran'da dünyaya gelmiş. İranlı İsveç yazar İranlı ve İs İsveç'te yaşıyor şimdi. Malmö'de yaşıyor. İran-Irak Savaşı sırasında 1987 yılında yani İsveç'e taşınmışlar ailesiyle birlikte. 2005 yılında Call It Whatever You Want, Whatever You Want isimli bir kitabı çıkmış. Onunla başarılı bir çıkış yapmış. İkinci kitabının adını söylemem mümkün değil İsveççe. Özür diliyorum hepinizden. 2008 yılında da e, bir ödüle layık görülmüş. 2016 yılında e, da bir radyo oyunda yayınlanmış. Özür dilerim şeyleri İsveççe okuyamadığım için. Ee, ona biraz Virginia Woolf'un ünlü şeyi, kadın yazarlara önerdi, yazı yazmak isteyen kadınlara önerdi. Bizim için belki e, mahremiyeti, e, kendine ait bir alanı temsil eden, kendine ait bir oda e, önerisi kadınlar için yeterli mi? Yazmak isteyen bir kadın için kendine ait bir oda ee, mahrem alan yeterli mi? Yoksa bunun ötesinde bir şey gerekir mi üzerine konuşacağız. Şimdi e, sözü ona bırakmak istiyorum. Do you hear me now? Okay. Thank you. Um, so I've written down some of my thoughts, and I thought it would be better to start with reading that and then hopefully uh, have a conversation. Um, I was uh, seven years old when my family moved uh, from Iran to Sweden. So um, all the first stories that I heard was in uh, they were in Persian, and they all started with the phrase "Yeki bud." Yeki Nabud, which means there was one and there wasn't one. And this paradoxical phrase is an opening to and um, embracing of uh, competing viewpoints, um, a, a tangle of, of competing claims. It is so and it is not so. Uh, maybe it is and maybe it isn't. And I think it's a reminder that there's always another side of the story that is being told or the truth that is being presented. And as an adult, uh, I also uh, learned to view this uh, phrase as a celebration of fiction um, and the almost endless um, possibilities for a story and how it can be told, um, but also as a sad thing, um, as, as mourning for um, all the stories that, um, that's never been told. They all exist um, on the other side of, of silence. Um, lived lives and, and experiences um, that until recently have not been, been written or, or told about. Um, history is, is just so filled with both visible and invisible uh, fences, um, especially built uh, for women uh, and around them. Um, and I guess most people here know about Virginia Woolf's uh, A Room of One's Own uh, and the importance of uh, a personal space for the creative mind. but. Without the freedom of movement, without the ability and the right to leave that room and uh, come back to it as one pleases, that very important and, and necessary room um, turns into confinement, uh, a prison cell. Uh, so the denial of freedom of movement deprives uh, human beings the, the integrity and, and control for their own bodies. Um, 
And I think it, it also denies them uh, the, the authority and um, autonomy. Uh, and these are, I think, two of the main ingredients in, in storytelling. Uh, um, so uh, women have been denied uh, this um, freedom of, of movement in the name of uh, religion, uh, chastity, um, class distinction, um, and, and even anatomy. <laughs> um, and, and now that um, women are uh, renegotiating those boundaries for uh, power, space, uh, language, um, you can also see that the, the um, the textual invisibility um, is is directly uh, connected to uh, to the freedom uh, of of movement. Um, and and personally, when I compare um, Iran with uh, Sweden, uh, even though I I've, I've read much more uh, Persian poetry than than Swedish, but it's it's really um, striking to see um, how much um, movement and, and the circulation of, of bodies and voices um, is, is central to, um, to, to the artistic work of uh, Iranian women. Um, uh, and there are so many metaphors in their works for... Um, um, um, uh, containment, you know, walls, veils, fences, uh, blind windows, cages, um, and and all of this coexists with um, what they desire, which is uh, running, dancing, uh, flying. Uh, one of the most famous and um, popular uh, poets, Furukh Farukhzad. Uh, maybe some of you know about her. Uh, she was obsessed with uh, speed, uh, with flying, uh, and she dreamt about houses without uh, walls. That was that was uh, one of her fantasies. Um, and I just want to end with um, talking about these these paradoxes um, that coexist. Um, they can be. Um, a bit like a double-edged sword, um, you know. It can the um, whatever um, those boundaries they can they can lead to creativity uh, and, a, and a vibrant language, uh, but they can also um, really uh, break a person down and um, leave them in their segregated and excluded uh, corner. Um, which I think is a very familiar experience for, for many um, women in history. Um, but that experience is also um, a, a very powerful way of, of knowing. Um, and, and I think experience can um, actually transform uh, perspective if, if the reader is, is open enough to it and uh, of course, if the writer is uh, feels that she's uh, free to express herself um, as she likes to, um, so those were a couple of my thoughts about um, language and, and movement. And um, thank you for listening. Öylese şunu diyebilir miyiz? Feminizmin kadın yazısı ile ilgili de söyledi. Hepsini kapsayarak söyledi. Özel olanın politik olması meselesi yetersiz. Aynı zamanda toplumsal ve politik alanların da dönüşüme tabi tutulması gerekiyor. Well, well to start with you need to have access uh, to um, to public places. Um, I, I I don't know how it is in in Turkey, but. In Iran, it's, it's just the last 160 years that women have started to move um, outside the, the, um, their home. 
uh, and we've had um, these um, division in society where the world of inside is for women and it's a private world and the world of outside uh, is for men and if you don't have access to it um, nobody sees you <laughs> hears you um, that, that that's a, a, a huge obstacle I can speak ama bir yandan da e, kendimin de İran'la ilgili gözlemlerim ve okuduklarım kadınların özellikle eğitimde e, çok yer aldığı yani üniversitelerde çok fazla kadın eğitim gördü ama o kadınların çalışma hayatına girmediği yönünde aynı şekilde parlamentoda da örneğin Türkiye'den daha fazla İsveç'le kıyaslamayalım ama komşusu olan Türkiye'den daha fazla kadın var İran'da ama yine de kamusal alanda yer alma ile ilgili e, bir şey var, bir e, sıkıntı var. Belki çalışmaya çıkmak ya da eğitim almak ya da siyaset tamam ama eğlenmek de hayatın bir parçası ve İran'da e, bir kadın için eğlenmeye çıkmak belki daha zor ve Türkiye'de de bunun giderek zorlaştığını deneyimliyoruz. Ne dersiniz? What was the last part to entertain? I mean, it's okay to go outside for work or for parliament or for education, but you would also like to go out to have fun, mm -hmm. to drink something and to socialize and mm -hmm. uh, to enjoy life. And this, there's a problem here. Uh, and this is something we are starting to experience in Turkey too as mm -hmm. women. And do you think that as a that would affect how you write and? Uh, Well, well, for me, it's um, it's a bit uh, more complicated, because because um, I don't uh, I don't actually live in Iran, okay. and I don't um, I, I read Persian poetry, and I'm interested in um, in in the works of um, right oh, sorry writers um, and and poets who worked in Iran and their life, um, but. Uh, Personally, I um, I write in um, in Sweden and in Swedish, and um, a lot about um, people in Sweden. It was only my um, last and third book that was um, um, actually uh, about Iran and people who live there, um, but um, in Swedish. <laughs> um, but what I was. I thought about your question about. Um, I think the way I, I see um, Iran is that it's a, a land full of um, paradoxes. Uh, you have, when you look at universities, um, most of the students are, are girls and women. Um, uh, they actually started to talk about um, having. Um, um, I don't know the word for it, but um, it basically, de behöver the flur är det svenska ordet bara för det. Men när det blir för många, when when you have too many girls and you need to have boys in in the courses in university, that you you you basically say uh, set a limit uh, that enough girls. Now we need to, even though they're not merited. <laughs> But we need to have boys uh, uh, at our, our uh, universities. But what happens is, um, after they're educated, because um, something does happen, <laughs> uh, many women just um, disappear. <laughs> you don't see as many. Um, of course, in workplaces, you you do see, but in in, in decision making uh, positions, uh, you don't see them. Uh, as much, uh, but when it comes to um, <coughs> entertain yourself and and move uh, uh, in the um, in the city, there's um, I think then we can talk about uh, difference in in um, in different classes and how much uh, women uh, from um, From the middle class and, and, and higher classes are more freely. They had they ha they can afford to enjoy themselves and, and move and, and um, basically live in a, in a parallel society where they're not touched 
as much uh, um, of the restrictions in the society. Uh, they can build their own um, bubbles, uh, if you will. But we're talking about a, a, a small percentage. What about Sweden? Do you feel... Uh, mm. Because you're what we would call a first generation mm. migrant in Sweden and from so, so different cultures. And how does it feel to be a migrant woman, in, young woman in Sweden and writing? Well, um, I, um, I'm not sure that I look at myself um, as, as a migrant, um, I'm, I'm, as, an, as an immigrant. Um, I, I think it's it's hard to actually consider yourself as an immigrant uh, when you've uh, lived somewhere for um, most of your life, okay. uh, uh, basically. But what I um, always think about is um, that I actually have the possibility <laughs> to um, to write about what I uh, uh, what I want. Um, and that's maybe um, something that can at times be uh, different between me and, and uh, um, a colleague, a Swedish colleague who's, who's born in Sweden and um, maybe don't think it's as an unusual <laughs> uh, thing uh, to do. And you feel um, it's like a favor and it's like a, um, it's like a present uh, or just like a privilege? Yeah, I think I see it as a privilege uh, uh, more than anything, because uh, I'm I'm always reminded of um, how my my life ha could have uh, looked like um, if my parents hadn't made that decision. Um, so in a way, it's, it, there's a, a, a gratitude towards them um, that gave me. Um, um, this life that is is not evident at all. Şimdi Türkçe'ye döneceğim. Ben kadınların kadınlarla kendine ait bir odanın tabii ki yetersiz olduğunu düşünüyorum. Zaten kendine ait bir oda da toplumsal koşullarla ilgili bir şey. Bunun elde edilmesi de devamı da biliyorsunuz kendine ait bir gelirdir. O daha da e, toplumsal koşullarla ilgili bir şey. İki farklı mesele olduğunu düşünüyorum burada. Bunlardan bir tanesi politik baskı tabii ki. E, yani neyi söyleyebilirsiniz, ne kadar söyleyebilirsiniz, neyi göze alarak söyleyebilirsiniz. Bunu e, sadece fiction yani sadece kurgu yazarları için değil çok geniş bir çerçevede yazı yazan herkesin meselesi olduğunu düşünüyorum. Ama bir yandan da bir kadın için e, toplumsal mesele de önemli. Yani bir kadın mesela cinsellikle ilgili yazmaya karar verdiyse, cinsellik üzerine yazmaya karar verdiyse, cinsel deneyimlerini, cinsel bir deneyim üzerine yazmaya karar verdiyse, e, işte dışlanmayı, küçümsen, belli bir şeyi, belli bir farklı muameleyi e, göze almak zorunda. Ve doğrudan doğruya bu politik baskıdan bağımsız olarak... E, toplumsal bir şey ve ikisi arasında bir tür farklılık olduğunu düşünüyorum. Siz ne dersiniz? Two types of. Yes, one is political. Mm -hmm. One is political. Um, I mean, you, you are forbidden or you get a punishment for writing something. And the other is that, for example, if you write about sexuality, then you are that woman who wrote about sexuality mm -hmm. and who wrote about her content, mm. etc., etc. So it's, it's two different things, but it's social. Yeah. Nobody gives take puss in jail, but Still, you are oppressed. Um, when it comes to the social pressure, um, for me, at a very personal level, uh, I've, I've met um, mostly Iranian women uh, readers um, who come to me and um, wonder why I uh, write about this and not that. Um, and mostly because they're immigrants and they have um, so much they want to tell, so much they've been through. 
um, and they can't do it themselves because of problem with language. Mm -hmm. um, and and me myself, I also sometimes can feel that maybe I have a responsibility towards them, but it's not the the, the society. Um, you know, the, the, the whole Swedish society, the, the, the pressure that I've felt have come from, from people who don't have um, access to the Swedish language the way uh, I have. And so they come uh, with uh, all these uh, wishes and, and demands <laughs> uh, to, um, to be told about. Um, but, so, so that's not, some, but, but um, when it comes to uh, political or um, what you said about writing about sexuality um, to me I don't think that would be a, a, a problem um, actually but um, for example Furur that I uh, um, just mentioned uh, she um, bas that, that's basically what she did she was um, 19 years old when she wrote her uh, first uh, poem, and that was uh, about um, an affair that she had had as as a married woman with a man, a married man, and what was um, so unique about uh, her way of of writing, and we hadn't had someone like that before her. Uh, she died in the 50s, and we haven't had anyone after her. Was that uh, she was so unapologetic about the way she wrote. She, she wrote about um, her sexuality, about lust, um, and about um, having sinned. She, she actually does say that I've sinned, a lustful, a, sin, a sinful of lust. Uh, and um, uh, without saying uh, that, uh, without being remorseful at all, without uh, asking uh, for uh, forgiveness, and um, uh, people were um, horrible. <laughs> Other poets, uh, both women uh, and and men, uh, reacted extremely uh, strong. And and till this day, they, they many people talk about her as um, as a, as a scandalous uh, woman, because you're not supposed to write that freely <laughs> and, and directly, because what she did with the language was that uh, she also um, wrote in an extremely direct uh, way, uh, without using metaphors, uh, which also was new, and, and um, she basically was chased out of the country. She, she had to, there was so much talk uh, about her that she had to uh, leave the country. And that, I think, still, um, is the conditions uh, today? If you if you write uh, in in Iran, you have to. Um, I think what happens with um, societies like Iran is that um, it's a veiled society. You know, it's it's not just about uh, veiling women <laughs> and their bodies. It's it's how it impacts the language. You have to, and I don't know if, if it's the same here or if you're moving toward that, but um, you have to um, have a, an abstract and elusive language to, to get your point through. Dün akşam şunu kısaca söylemek istiyorum. Dün akşam tanıştığımızda Furu'dan bahsettik ve ben de onun ünlü dizesi Kuş ölürsen uçuşu hatırlanın. İşte çok insanın kolunda dövme falan olduğunu söyledim. Ee, o da şey yap, yani çok tanınan bir şey. Ee, dile geçmeden önce, dil meselesine geçeceğim ama belki kendine ait bir odanın yanına kendine ait bir ülke de ekleyebiliriz. Değil mi? İkinci bir şey olarak kendimize ait bir oda ama aynı zamanda kendimize ait bir ülkeye ihtiyacımız var. Buradan dile gelmek istiyorum. Ee, siz... İsveççeyi kullanma kolaylığından ama işte Farsçayı da hakim olmaktan bunun zaten yarattığı e, imgesel bir zenginlik var. Birkaç dile hakim yazarların çoğunda e, özellikle bir doğu dilini bilenlerin çoğunda gördüğümüz bir şey var. 
Ama e, kadınların e, bir de dille meselesi var. Kendi ana dillerinde ya da daha sonra öğrendikleri dilde kendilerini e, rahat evlerinde o dili kendi yurtları gibi yani hani gerçekten ana dil ana yurdudur aslında ama kadınların e, bunu hissetmemeleri, bununla ilgili rahat özellikle edebiyat yazarken rahat etmemeleri, hatta politika yazarken de gibi bir şey var. İnşallah can seyret. Yeah, but, but I think then we're talking about um, um, a, a cultural thing, right? You, um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understood what you mean about mother uh, tongue, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, okay. But um, um, I think it's more about when you, um, just to give an example, um, I met a Polish woman once. <laughs> She was in her 70s. Uh, and she'd moved to Sweden. Uh, And she was so mad and so angry um, about the way uh, that the people in in, um, in Sweden read newspapers. And, and she said, and she was shaking. She said, "Oh, you, you read uh, the printed words in the newspaper. You you read all the black marks." Uh, but in Poland, we we learn very very early that it's the white spaces on the page that is the important thing. It's it's what's written between those black uh, words that is uh, the important thing, and I think in in societies um, like that that are, that are, are used to um, uh, restrainments in, in in different forms, um, you form a, a sensitivity uh, and a, a language <laughs> uh, to communicate um, with each other, and and it can be. Um, symbolic, or it can be very vague and, and elusive. And when I sometimes compare <laughs> Swedish and uh, a Persian um, poetry, Sweden, Swedish is, is in, in comparison, much more precise. Um, and you don't have that. In Farouk was, uh, um, you know, she wasn't. She wrote that way, but but uh, she was so unique because uh, she uh, basically she wrote more Swedish than, than uh, Persian. Um, but but I, I think those type of cultures um, make people start to um, almost censor themselves uh, after a while. Uh, if, if, if people feel that they, they cannot say it as it is, um, you know, what they see is, is what they want to write about. If they can't uh, uh, do that, if there's always a, a voice <laughs> in, in your head that tells you you shouldn't uh, write about this, um, and, and you, you start with self-censoring, um, that's, uh, that's what I often see. <laughs> Uh, when I'm in Iran and when I talk with people who, who work in Iran, that uh, we do so much of the work ourselves, they say. That and that's the dangerous uh, part of it. No, no one from outside tells you uh, you can't write that. We we do a lot of the work um, ourselves. But, ama bir yandan da. Ben de bazen şey, ne, ne dil konuşayım şey yapalım. Ba bir yandan da e, çok yaygın bir şey var. Baskının e, ilham verici olduğu ile ilgili. Hem e, konular açısından mm -hmm. hem de e, önünüzde çok, çok fazla malzeme var bir yazar olarak. Hem de aynı zamanda dili zenginleştirme açısından. Yani... E, işte ezop dili denen e, farklı bir şekilde söyleme, aynı şeyi başka türlü söyleme e, bir tür yaratıcılıkta katabiliyor e, dile diye bir iddia var. Bununla ilgili ne dersiniz? Hmm. You mean if censorship actually makes you more creative? Yes. Hmm. Um, maybe in the short term <laughs> it actually can make you, um, it can force you to find another um, language to, to get through that. Um, I was um, 
watching a, an, an interview with an Iranian movie maker, and um, he makes his movies in Iran, and what, what he said can actually be applied to, to literature as well, I think. Uh, and, and he compared it to um, a stone that you, you put in, in, in, in the way of a, of a body of water. You know, the water can find a way uh, around uh, that stone, but only in the short term. Um, in, in the long term, um, I think censorship actually uh, kills uh, creativity, exactly because um, it, when, when it becomes a part of your, your character, <laughs> when you internalize uh, that way of thinking, when, when you, when you uh, work in, in that kind of system, um, I think it's, it's very hard to be immune uh, to that kind of thinking because you're, you're always struggling uh, with it. Um, and I think we have many examples of people who, who have been able to be creative for a while, <laughs> but, but in the long term, um, it basically kills your creativity. And so I, I don't believe that it's, it's, it's almost as if you ascribe then uh, people's uh, creativity to, to the ones who censor them. <laughs> so it, it's thanks to them that people can be uh, creative. And I think that it is not. It's, um, um, it's just that people are geniuses. <laughs> so they can, they can actually uh, create. But they need more support than, than uh, boundaries. Firu ve başka bir sürü e, Türkiye'li kadın yazardı e, şehvet ve günah kelimelerini aynı şey içinde kullanır ve bu önemli bir şeydir. Ben yani günah işlemek büyük bir özgürlük ve her <gülüyor> insanın hakkı. Ama bir adım daha var. Neden günah diye sorgulamak? E, yani e, şehvete dair şeyler. Rıza'yı çiğnemekten bahsetmiyorum. Şehvete dair şeylerin e, günah olması meselesi var. Bu da edebiyatın sorguladığı bir şey. E, şimdi yeri değil ama böyle Türkiye'li yazarlar, mesela Pınar Kür geliyor aklıma, Sevgi Soysal geliyor. E, böyle bir şey de var. E, bu açıdan e, kendi deneyiminizi nasıl görürsünüz? Özellikle kadınlar için söylenen ee, e, günah meselesi. Bunu sadece günahı hmm. sadece dinsel bir şey olarak ele almıyorum. Aynı zamanda toplumsal bir şey. Başka adı var toplumsal olduğu zaman. Günah ya Ayıp diyoruz biz. İngilizcesi var mı onu bile bilmiyorum açıkçası. Bu da çevirmenler için. <gülüyor> yani şöyle hani tam şey olan hani çevirilebilir ama e, bu nasıl e, bununla ilgili ne hissedersiniz? Ne düşünürsünüz? Bunu sorgulamak Kadın edebiyatında, kadınların yazısında nerede duruyor? Yani Firu'dan bir adım öteye gitmek. Um, actually, being um, committing sinful acts <gülüyor> is is um, is nothing new in in Persian uh, literature. Uh, you have that in in, in many both uh, novels and and uh, and poetry, um, but and, and also um, the so-called strong female characters uh, who know what they want. Um, uh, they actually do feel uh, lost, and it's it's really interesting to see how um, how writers. Uh, have tried to to show how two characters can um, really just fall in love with each other. I mean, how how do you fall in love with someone when you're not able to see them? You know, so we have um, like the wind is a symbol <laughs> that carries out a message from a lover <laughs> to another, uh, or people dream about each other without even seeing them, and then we have many women characters who. Um, go after that man that they, <laughs> they, they want and they even um, deceive the, the husband they have <laughs> with help of other women to, um, to get that um, man that they want. Uh, we even have characters that led armies uh, to, to uh, <laughs> you know, go across country. Um, but what, what often happens is that um, 
when um, that character gets the man that, that she wants, um, very quickly uh, you have to do something about the sinful part. Because <laughs> that is something that cannot... Um, you cannot have someone who, who commits sin and is, is, does something uh, shameful. <laughs> um, uh, she can't get away with it. <laughs> So, so what usually ha happens is that, um, in a magical way, <laughs> um, she's always uh, a virgin, even if she's been married. Mm. Uh, but but she's had helped to to, <laughs> you know, not consummate uh, the marriage. Um, and when she gets the man that she she wants, um, they marry and they they go to traditional um, roles. Uh, and then they can live uh, the life that they want. So it, it's a way of, of using um, sin and shame sometimes as, as something um, exciting, <laughs> but having it, um, but, but, but, but you know, have putting uh, put a, a safe distance <laughs> between the, the readers <laughs> and the actual um, act uh, of sin. Um, that's been a, a traditional way of, of uh, the mostly male writers to to touch uh, uh, these uh, these issues. Women have, have not written about them um, as um, they've written about it as more, more directly. Uh, Fru was unapologetic uh, about it. Other women have have written about, it, but but the, the consequences um, of it, uh, which is not. Um, I mean, they're not happy stories, and uh, what I uh, find happens to them is that um, most, a lot of time, you're not you're not allowed to read them. <laughs> you know, they're they're easily forgotten, and and and, and in one way or another, um, you don't see the value in in those stories as as literature. Um, I. Um, there was, there's this um, professor in literature in in, in the U.S. Uh, she wanted to write her dissertation about uh, in the late 70s um, about um, two um, poets, Parvina uh, Tasami and and Farouk Farouksad. Um, um, as she couldn't find any books about them, um, they were not valued. <laughs> Uh, and and any any critical treatment of of the issues that ra they raise, which could be a sin, or or, or love, sexuality, uh, you name it, uh, they were just um, even if they had published works, um, there was people maybe didn't read them, <laughs> and they had been forgotten. And sh she thirty years later <laughs> wrote about them. Um, and, and analyzed uh, their work. Bu dille ilgili bir şey anlatmak istiyorum. E, yıllar önce e, aralarında Belçikalıların ve Fransızların da bulunduğu, işte Türkiye'li kadınların da bulunduğu bir grupla İran'da bir konferansa katılmıştık ve sonraki sohbette e, şunu fark ettik. İşve kelimesinin sanırım Farsçadan gelme bir kelime. İşve kelimesini İngilizce karşılığını bulamıyoruz. Hı hı. Ve e, bunu da açıklayamıyoruz Belçikalılara ve şey nedir iş ve açıklayamıyoruz. Yani bu bizim belli bir yasaklar dünyası e, içinde olan bir e, bir kavram. E, i̇şte yani iş ve yapıyor kadın filan anlatamıyoruz yani <gülüyor> hani e, şeyi. Böyle bir şey de var. Aslında o. E, ki o dönemde şöyle bir şey vardı Türkiye'de işte hangi kadın daha güzel diye kıyaslamalar yapılırdı. İşte Hülya Avşar, Sibel Can kıyaslanır. İşte dansı güzel, gözleri güzel, şu şey falan. Bir şey de cilveydi. Yani kriterlerden biri kim daha iyi cilve yapıyordu. Yani Ama bu şey de Belçikalılar için, e, bilmiyorum İsveçliler için nedir? Yani böyle bir e, yoktu böyle bir konsept falan. Yani... Aslında dilin şeyi, kelimelerin oluşması falan da e, biraz toplumsal koşullarla e, ilintili diye düşünüyorum. Bilmiyorum. E, i̇nşallah çeviri buna yeterli olmalı. <gülüyor> ne dersiniz? 
But the question is... Um, do you feel that, I mean, the vocabulary is also mm. formed by... Uh, the conditions yes, of... Yes, of social conditions and the gender relations. Yes. Um, uh, when it comes to, to Eshwe, um, <laughs> um, sometimes it's sometimes people talk about women using Eshwe um, as as a way of manipulating um, men uh, and, and getting away. Uh, with uh, with things, but um, I think it. I'm I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. I understand uh, the question uh, really, but um, yeah. No. So. I mean, do you feel that the conditions? Mm? Uh, it's also giving a message mm. in any way to give a message that you like someone or something. Yeah. Do you think that? This, I mean, I feel that. Uh, the relations with, between genders and any sexual relations, it also forms a vocabulary. Yes, norms. absolutely. And, and oh, just the vocabulary, the communication, it, I think it's, it's when you have um, sex-segregated um, societies um, like Iran. Um, it, it really veils everything. Um, you, the, the language, um, how you communicate, and, and it's not just veiling the women. Also, the men are in a way uh, veiled from um, from parts of, of society that goes on uh, uh, inside. And, and of course, they it. it um, um, I mean, we even it even not just language. It also architecture <laughs> is is uh, we actually um, have words that are um, for inside. Daruni and outside Bruni, and and they are basically words for um, uh, women's space and and male uh, uh, space, um, and it goes also back to what we talked about movement and and all the uh, male privileges um, that comes to that that that uh, movement speed all that are are. Um, words and a language used for about uh, for and about uh, men when, when women um, yeah they're supposed to have a uh, they're supposed to be um, they can be seductive <laughs> but not active um, and and that's a way of, of um, I mean when you want to describe uh, a, a woman um, okay are we out of time? Or? No, no, no. no, no, no. Um, it's you, you basically use passive words as something nice when it comes to women, um, and you encourage them <laughs> to to to stay uh, like that. You know, it's is something you do, but um, without taking initi initiatives, um, and and there's different um, examples uh, like that, how, how, uh, how everything that has to do with initiatives and, and being active is, um, uh, is used for men, basically. Bu tam da mekan üzerinden ve dil üzerinden söylemek istediğim bir şey var. Ee, Türk evinde, geleneksel Türk hmm. evinde e, iki mekan öne çıkıyor. İşte harem, Haremlik ve selamlık olarak harem haramdan geliyor. Ee, işte sakınılması da gereken bir şey. Kadına ait alan selam, karşılama ve işte erkeğe ait alan. Fakat e, biz mimari literatüre baktığımızda başka bir alan daha çıkıyor. Bu da e, daha çok açık avlularda, bahçede geçen, işte e, sıcak iklimlerde içinde açık mutfağı, kagir ocağı da olan ve adına hayat denen. Hayatlı ev, Türk hayatlı ev dediğimiz. Şimdi bu hayat sözcüğü, dolayısıyla üç sözcük var e, Türk evinde. E, harem, selam ve hayat. Hayatta kadınlar zaman geçiriyorlar ve yine mahrem bir alan. Ama We have the dış same. mekan mm -hmm. burası. Burada aslında kadına şöyle deniyor, senin hayatın burası. İşte bu da sınırlı ama işte gökyüzü var ama işte o da sınırlı bir alan deniyor. Bir sınırlama da var bu sözcüğün içinde. Ama bir yandan da bu sözcük e, hayat selamla karşılaştırdığımızda hayatın olduğu yerde kadın var. 
diye bir taraftan da bakabiliyoruz. Dolayısıyla bir olumlamaya doğru gidersek ve işte başlıkla da bağladığımız zaman bu hayatı biz aldığımızda, taşıdığımızda, çıkardığımızda, konuttan evden götürüp koyduğumuz zaman işte o kendine ait odada o hayatı aldığımızda, götürdüğümüzde ne oluyor? Çünkü sözcük ve gelenek bize aslında sınırlamayı getirirken ve kadını hayatın merkezine de koymuş oluyor bu bakışla. Ee, ve bu bağlamda sormak da istiyorum. Evet politik olan dedik vesaire dedik. Bu kendine ait odanın dışında bir de doğa var. Uzak doğa, yakın doğa ya da yabani doğa var. Ee, ve e, kadın ve doğa özdeşliği üzerinde siz e, kadın ve e, doğa anlamında işte özne, nesne ilişkisi üzerine ne düşünüyorsunuz? Bu kendine ait odanın dışında kadının işte 70'lerden sonra baktığı, ekofeminizle birlikte baktığı doğa üzerinden e, neler düşünürsünüz diye bağlayayım. Oh God. <gülüyor> um, I'm, I'm really sorry I can't I, uh, about the ecofeminism. I, uh, um, I mean really what... Um, <gülüyor> My my books, my novels is is really not about uh, these issues. Um, so I'm I'm afraid, uh, and I'm sorry to disappointing you. Um, but when it comes to um, just mobility, um, I, I think I actually cannot understand how it would be possible for for women to. Um, write, express themselves, um, and in many ways to, to, to think uh, if they're not allowed <laughs> outside uh, that, uh, you know, those walls, you know, when all you see uh, is, is the, uh, you know, four walls and, and, the, and the sky above, um, it's just, it, it really is like being in, in house arrest. Um, and. And for example, what you see in Iran is that, um, yeah, the 160 from 160 years ago, women started to um, push those uh, boundaries. So um, sometimes with veil, <laughs> and and other times uh, without it, uh, you know, short periods of of times, but um, they've actually had to. <laughs> Um, move outside uh, the house and, and get into um, public places, squares, um, universities, um, and and that that's the only way then they can use to um, f describe their lives and and find their own language to to describe what they see. Um, I'm sorry, I, I just, um, but, but that's, um, I think what we, the reason that we lack so many stories <laughs> is uh, that women have, um, they've talked to each other, but it's always stayed there and it's always been, there's been this uh, verbal tradition that women have told each other stories in those very, very private spheres and, and, and rooms. Um, and it's, it's if, if that doesn't go from mother to daughter, those stories, after a while they just disappear. Um, and what happened was uh, that women started to find ways of preserving uh, those stories. And, and they started to write about their mothers and, and grandmothers, but they had to, you, uh, you need um, a certain distance also from that life to be able to actually write about it because many times women uh, or, or anyone who is in a situation, they can be blind for so much also. Uh, so sometimes you need distance for someone to, to, yeah, the alienation and the, sometimes even the estrangement. You know, that actually makes it um, possible for you to think critically, because you need that. You, um, I think something that I miss uh, sometimes, maybe it's coming more and more, but um, a critical way 
of writing about uh, women <laughs> and, and stories and life lived. Um, I'm, I'm sorry I missed most of the, the uh, talk that was uh, before me, but I heard a bit about uh, role models. <laughs> um, uh, of course, they're very, very good. Um, you need you need examples. You you really do. I'm I'm really glad that Virginia Woolf is a genius, but also kind of relieved that she's a woman <laughs> uh, genius. You you need to see that. Um, but you also need to look critically <laughs> um, at uh, how people have lived, <laughs> what they've expect uh, accepted, uh, what they sacrificed. Um, and those can be told uh, oftentimes after one or two generations who uh, have um, created a space for themselves to, to, um, to think and, and to feel, uh, excuse me? I can hear new space. I think. Yes, exactly, uh, exactly. And I think what what makes me happy is to see that that is actually now happening. Uh, and and that's when you get different. I mean, that's when the nuances come in. And that to me is freedom. When you don't have one story, a single story, you have different uh, views, uh, on point counterpoints. Uh, and as a woman, you can you can choose that. This, the most special thing is not that oh you're a woman and you're writing that you can actually your your personality and what you like your taste, all of that can you know you can take that in consideration and and have your own voice as they call it. Benim sana küçük bir itirazım olacak izinle. Yani söylem ve isim gerçekliği değiştirmez. Oraya değil hayat, yani o evin alanı içindeki şey, ister hayatta, ister özgürlükte, özgürlük meydanı de evdesin. Orası hayat değil. Ya yani adı, adının hayat olması onu bir özgürlük alanı yani. Kadın hayatı merkezine koymuyorsun. Sadece onu sunduğun alanın adını değiştiriyorsun ve ve burada şöyle bir şeye de geliyoruz. Dilde üzerine de konuşurken yani Hani önce dil değişmeli diye bir şey var mı? Önce dili değiştirelim. Çok duyduğumuz bir şey. Yok. Ee, hayat değişince, yaşadığımız hayat değişince dil değişir. Dil şeyle değişmez. Yani dilimiz biz istediğimiz kadar işte e, dili değiştirelim, küfürleri değiştirelim, şeyi çıkaralım, cinsiyeti dilden çıkaralım. Ee, yine bulaşıklar bellidir yani. Hani <gülüyor> şey olmaz o. Yani onu değiştiren, yani toplumsal gerçek değiştiren bir şey olmaz diye düşünüyorum ve e, kadın kadına aşkı sormak istiyorum. Hmm. İran şiirinde İran şiirinde e, kadın kadına aşk. E, küçük bir şey söylemek istiyorum. Transseksüelliğin serbest olduğu bir ülke İran. Üzüntü. Evet, evet. Transseksüel. <gülüyor> Transseksüel ameliyatların ser, parasız yapıldı. Devletin parasız yaptı hmm. diye biliyorum. Herhalde İsveç'le e, tek ortak e, şey bu olabilir. <gülüyor> şey. Ama değil mi? E, the state actually supported. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it it probably uh, is. I, it's just that I'm more interested in in a um, bit more um, classic uh, um, poets. Uh, but I, I think there there are uh, many about men, <laughs> men about men. Uh, I mean, Hafez <laughs> poetry is. I mean, you can of course interpret it as as love to uh, with Rumi as well as as love. Uh, mm -hmm. You know as a spiritual love, but but a lot of it can also be read as... Uh, Sexual Yes, uh, as, uh, uh, and as, as romantic feelings uh, toward another uh, another man. Okay, and do you think there's something I should have asked you and you have to talk about, you, have, you should have talked about, um, as a woman writer? <laughs> 
searching stories about me? No, uh, I think not. Uh, not not really. I, I just I would just like to ask you. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I would like to know is um, this um, sensibility that can come um, in in language that you can see um, in in language um, when um, when people cannot speak. Uh, freely, um, you know that, that um, uh, writers sometimes have to uh, create a symbolic language to, to communicate uh, with uh, with the readers. Have you had that in Turkey, or are you going toward that? Can you just say something we about? We had that in Turkey. I'll go in Turkish. Mm. Uh, in Turkish. Mm -mm. Uh, aslında e, Türkiye çok sansür dönemleri gördü, çok baskı gördü ve bu tür simgesel, e, işte ezopteli gibi anlatımların çok e, çeşitli dönemlerde gerilediğini, açıldığını, sonra tekrar olduğunu, sonra tekrar e, kullanıldığını görüyoruz. Ben kendi adıma bir şey söylemek istiyorum. Çok çok çok az edebiyat yazdım ama e, bolca politika yazıyorum ve e, feminist metodolojiyle yazmanın e, farklı yazma tekniklerini bir arada kullanmak olduğunu düşünüyorum. Dolayısıyla politika yazarken de yani benim için edebi anlatım iki şeye dayanır. Bir tanesi imge kullanımı, ikincisi sesi mesele etmek. Sesi, cümlenin sesini yani sadece şey değil. Bunları politik yaz, yani başka şeylerin yanında bunları da politik yazıya taş, taşımaya çalışıyorum. Edebi imgeler yani imge kullanmaya çalışıyorum ve Sese dikkat etmeye çalışıyorum politika yazarken de. Ee, bir de hem e, yani bilgi, bilgi birikimine hem işte istatistiklere filan hem de öznel deneyimlere yer vermeye çalışıyorum. Bunun feminist yazının bu iç içe geçmenin feminist yazının bir parçası olduğunu düşünüyorum. Bir, a, yolu olduğunu düşünüyorum ve sansürle de baş etmenin bir yolu olarak buna başvuruyorum. Yani bazı şeyler o kadar edebi ki hani o alışıldık dilde umarım savcı baktığında <gülüyor> başka bir şey görüyordur. Yani o, o şeye oturtamayabilir onu. Yani o hı hı. kalıba hani bildiğimiz politika hani siz savaş suçlusunuz dıdı bıdı falan o kalıba oturtamadan yani bu aynı zamanda bence şeyin bir yöntemi ama bu Şimdiki dönemde görebildiğim kadarıyla e, yani böyle bir şey ezop diline başvurmak ya da sansürü üslupla şey yapmaya çalışmak çok e, kullanılmıyor. Daha çok e, herkes cesaretini sınadığı bir dönemdeyiz diye düşünüyorum ve bunun da eril bir şey olduğunu düşünüyorum. Ayrı bir konu olarak söylüyorum. <gülüyor> Sizin? <gülüyor> okay. Thank you. Biz büyük ölçüde şey yaptık, size sormak isteyen katkıda. Önce soruları alalım, bir beş dakika. Sonra katkıları alalım, olur mu? Hazır mikrofon buradayken ben başlayayım. Şeyden bahsettiniz çokça. Coğrafya, coğrafyanın bizim yazdıklarımız üzerindeki etkisi ve bunun özellikle dile nasıl yerleştiği, çevir çeviremediğimiz bazı kelimelerin olması. Ben Marianne'e Dün biz de biraz bahsediyorduk aslında İsveççe yazıp İran hakkında yazıp İsveçli okura ulaşmakla alakalı kendi çelişkilerini biraz aktarmıştı. Hani hakikaten merak ediyorum biz yazarlar ve okurlar bağlamında da çeviriyi de hesaba katacak olursak farklı kültürlerden gelip de başka bir ülkede nasıl ses getiriyor bu eserler ya da hakikaten biz yaşadığımız yerde mi daha... Oranın dilini kullanarak, oradaki okura seslenerek bir şeyler üretebiliyoruz. Hani biraz bu çelişkiler üzerinden belki çeviriye de değinerek neler yapılabileceğini konuşabiliriz gibi düşündüm. Um, uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, Merhaba, Marjina. Ee, geldiğin için teşekkürler. Ee, İran'la ve olan bitenle ilgili oldukça derinlemesine e, güzel bir sohbet oluyor. 
Ee, ben şunu sormak istiyorum e, Seren sorusundan devamla. E, 7 yaşında İran'dan İsveç'e gittin ve orada e, yazıyorsun, orada büyüdün ve orada yazıyorsun. E, İranlı e, kadınların yanlış anlamadıysam özellikle e, yazdıklarınla ilgili şunu da yazsam veya şunu niye yazmadın gibi bazı talepleri olduğundan söz ettin. Ee, peki İsveçliler nasıl karşılıyor? Ben onu merak ediyorum bağlantılı olarak. Ee, yazdıklarını en çok kim okuyor? Yani Veya sen yazarken e, belli bir okur var mı karşında? Yani genellikle yoktur ama hani kime, kime yazıyorsun ve kim en çok okuyor? Ee, nasıl bir karşılık buluyor kitaplarında? Ee, bunu merak ediyorum. E, ve yani İran'la ilgili bir e, derdin var mı? Oradaki duruma göndermeler yapıyor musun? Veya bir şekilde destekleme ihtiyacı hissediyor musun yazarken? Um, women. Um, Swedish and Iranian women. I, it's not that I write for them. I honestly don't think about them when I'm actually uh, writing. Um, but the readers I meet um are are mostly uh women of different um ages um and well the the books i've written is is, is really i mean is is it's really not about feminism it's it's it's basically always about families and how they really just try to live their lives uh and get through life um and the the the two first books are are basically um uh, about families in in Sweden um and the third is um in in uh, Iran um and to answer your question uh first about i think it would be really really sad um if you can only um use your um mother tongue <laughs> to talk about your country. Um, it's, it's really, really hard sometimes. Um, <laughs> um, but but I, I, I do want to, I mean, I want to believe more in language <laughs> and the possibilities that uh, it actually gives you to, to tell a story. Maybe sometimes um, I mean, I think I gave you an example because the the, the last book is um, is about three generations uh, Iranian um, a grandmother, her daughters, and their children, um, and uh, th th it's it's um, the modern um, Iranian history is in the background of of the book. They all uh, the the grandmother lived through the the coup d'état. Uh, in the 50s, her daughters went through the, the Islamic Revolution in 1979, and their children um, um, experienced uh, the 2009 election. And there was many um, um, all the demonstrations um, against the, the result uh, of the, uh, the um, election, um, and, and it, it's about looking how how this. Um, all these historical moments have affected their lives um, and how much they can communicate their experiences uh, to each other. Um, and of course, you need to know so much about um, Iranian history and, and culture. To um, There are so many details um, that if, if everything about the country is new or, or most of it is foreign to you, it's hard as a reader to uh, to understand what um, just what a name if a person is called something it can tell you so much about their background which class they come from um, and I and, and I, I just knew it would be lost to a lot of readers uh, that the what the grandmother she, I mean, she has such a majestic <laughs> name um, but I, and, and I wanted it to be a work of fiction, you know. It, it's not a piece of uh, journalism where you, ha where you go in and e explain the history of the country. But but 
that comes to, I mean, you just have to work harder <laughs> and, and um, um, come up with different solutions of how, how, how to just, because people are a lot like each other. <laughs> people understand that it basically, it, it's so much about family relations. Um, uh, but of course, I mean, I think I told you an example, um, just to give one example of things that can um, become an issue. <laughs> uh, they smoke a lot in the book. Um, the, the, the sister, the women, um, and, and one of them smoked Marlboro, you know, the, the red Marlboro, um, and the other, um, a sugar that is called Bahman. And Bahman is the, the uh, cheaper and um, just, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not, um, uh, the, the quality is, is really, really low. Uh, and to an Iranian reader, they would immediately know <laughs> What kind of character smokes a Bahman, and and what, uh, which character smokes a Marlboro, and what it says uh, about them? When you write in another, <laughs> um, in another language, you have to explain. You, you can't just say Bahman; it doesn't say anything. I, I don't even have to. I, if I would have written it in in Persian, I wouldn't even need to say that it's cigarettes. I would just say Bahman. So a lot of details like that, and and larger things about history and and culture. Um, but I do believe that you can you can do it. <laughs> um, it's just that uh, you have to you have to find your own language within the language uh, to to get past those um, those issues. Um, I forgot the other question. I'm, was it the same? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Merhaba, ee, şeyle ilgili benim kafamda bu hayattan sonra kafama şöyle bir şey takıldı. Ee, bu aslında bazı söylemlerin, kelimelerin, argümanların e, hani nasıl baskının işte geçici sü süreyle bir yaratıcılık oluşturabileceğinden bahsettik. Tam tersi de bu yaratıcılığın da karşı tarafta eril ve iktidarda da başka bir yaratıcılık meydana getirdiği gibi bir soru, yani düşüncem var benim. Yani nasıl işte bu özel alanın politikliğinden bahsediyoruz, beyanın esasından bahsediyoruz. Hop sonra o bizi ya bunu nasıl tam tercüme edilebilir bilmiyorum Biraz ama. Yavaş konuşursan Pardon. şey olur, çevirmenler için söyleyeyim. Evet. Çok <gülüyor> Pardon. Ya zaten tam olarak nasıl e, ifade edilebileceğinden çok emin değilim. Hani bu ülkenin bir şeyler üretiyoruz. Bazı söylemler, bazı düşünceler ve hani o karşıdaki eril iktidar tahakküm ya da hani karşısında durduğumuz şey onu alıp içini değiştirip bize başka türlü sunuyor. Yani hayatta biraz ona hayat operasyonu geldi sakma gibi. Hani e, dolayısıyla bu tip şeyler mesela hani Farsça'da ya da İsveççe'de hani diğer dillerde de ya da o kültürlerde de buna dair bir şeyler var mı merak ediyorum. Yani e, belki e, e, tam tersi bir anlam değiştirme, içini boşaltmak. Yani bizim e, savunduğumuz ya da dolaylı olarak anlattığımız argümanları bir e, isyan ya da hani bir şeyi savunmak üzerinden söylerken onun bize tekrar e, karşı bir argüman olarak gelmesi gibi bir şey. Anlatabildim mi? Um, are, you, are you talking about sometimes that you take back the movements that take back work, words? For example, uh, um, a word has been used about um, group, you know, demeaning word about women or minorities, and and and those groups, um, in an attempt to um, to take back control over that word, uh, start to use it in their own way. So they empty it. They empty it. For example, I don't know what she meant that. Maybe you can. I understood. Sorry. I mean, I understood that it didn't have anything to do with language. I mean, I got what I got what your your point, but this is, I think, not something. I need English to talk. I mean, I think it's not something. I mean, I think it's not something. I mean, I think it's not something. I mean, I think it's not something. Sometimes you, uh, you have a political argument, mm. 
and the enemy takes the political argument and uses against you. Against you. Against okay. you. But I think this is not something. Yes, no, that's not really my. Uh, yeah. They can't hear you. Mikrofona konu. Pardon. Ben bunun da yani kendi adıma söylüyorum. Bunun dille ilgili bir mesele değil, politik ka yapma ile ilgili bir mesele olduğunu düşünüyorum ve biraz da yani politik bir söz üretirken ilk aklımıza geleni değil de biraz önünü arkasını geleceği falan düşünerek yaparsak daha şey olacağımızı düşünüyorum. Biraz daha derin politika yani politika biraz daha derin düşünerek yapılabileceğini düşünüyorum ama bir çoğunuzun da bildiği gibi yani politik deneyim dille ilgili deneyimden daha şey <gülüyor> <gülüyor> ama yani onun hani e, o edebiyatın sınırları içinde bir müdahaleyle bu tür pejoratifleştirme şeyleri e, engellenemez. Ama mesela şunu yapabiliriz ve yapmaya başlandı. Mesela e, erkek arkadaşların izine sığınarak söylüyorum. Mesela sik kafa bir şey olarak bir küfür olarak şey yaptı e, yerleşti Türkçe'ye. Bu biraz edebiyatla, mizahı da edebiyata katarsam onunla oldu. Biz bunu kullanabiliriz. Ama tam tersi yani böyle politik argümanların, politik kavramların içinin boşaltılması bence edebiyatın alanında bir şey değil diye düşünüyorum. Bilmiyorum. No, I agree. <gülüyor> Katılıyorum dedi. Görüyorsunuz. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <gülüyor> Zamanımız doldu. Ee, Herkese çok teşekkürler. Thank you. Ee...